Hey guys, my name's Jared Beckwith. I'm a registered EEG technologist. I place wires on the patient's scalp and record the electrical activity of their brain, mostly for seizures. Now, if you're working as an EEG tech, there's a possibility of getting injured. Now, in this video, I wanted to talk about how to prevent getting injured as an EEG technologist. If you guys have the same job as me, or if you're considering this as a career, this is very helpful information to know early on because prevention is the best thing. You, you don't wanna get 10, 20 years down the line and then it's too late, you gotta have five, six back surgeries. We gotta start early with preventing injury. Kinda like how in some jobs where you lift really heavy objects, they train you to lift with your legs, not your back. It's kind of similar in our job. The Probably the highest probability of injury is gonna to be to your back, lower back. So let's just say I had a little lower back strain. That's how I got the idea for this video. So you're gonna to wanna to protect your lower back. Got these little heat pads, been working pretty good. Now, how did I strain my lower back? Not during my job, luckily. Uh, I've been playing a game called pickleball. You hit a little wiffle ball back and forth. It's like a hybrid between ping pong and tennis. It's a lot of fun, guys. We could say I'm addicted. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, but I overextended myself, strained my back, and now I've been thinking about, oh yeah, the most common injury as an EEG tech is back injury as well. So how do we prevent it? When I was first learning to hook up EEGs as a student, I would go into the room, not adjust the bed at all, big mistake I would kind of just leave it how it is because you're a beginner you you don't know how to adjust the bed perfectly to minimize strain on the back no I'm just worried about getting all the wires on in the first place I'm stressing out enough about that so the last thing on my mind is protecting my back so I'd go through hook up the EEG I'd be twisting this way that way doing anything and everything I can to get the wires on in the right spots. The EEG tech supervisors who were training me would always tell me, they'd see me twisting this way, that way, and be like, Jared, hold up, hold up. Let's readjust the bed so you don't strain your back now. It took a couple months to get really get through to me. I think it was mostly I was stressing out about getting the wires on in the right spots in the first place. Uh, uh, my back was the last thing on my mind. I, you know, I'm young. I. I can twist my back this way, that way, but let's just say I should have listened to them earlier. Definitely a big thing, readjust the bed. So when you readjust the bed, first you wanna put up the guardrails on both sides of the bed. You don't want the patient falling out on your watch. That would be a disaster. Luckily, I haven't had it happen to me. So guardrails up, and then you just raise the bed straight up and I also like to have it kind of, instead of them laying completely flat, I kind of angle it up, kind of like at a 45 degree angle, raising the back part up. Now that's the ideal position for me. I'm pretty tall, 5'11 and a half. If any ladies are watching, six feet. Raise the bed up to a, a comfortable height to where you don't have to bend over when you're putting all the wires on. So that'll definitely help your back out, but when you're done with the EEG, what another important thing is don't forget to lower the bed down again once once you're done. You don't you don't want to leave the patient up at max height in the hospital but in the hospital bed. That's just a recipe for disaster as well. Uh, it it slipped my mind a couple times when I was uh, a student, but the supervisors were there and they're like Jared, remember we got to lower the bed. We Quick little recap. First, make sure the guardrails are up on the patient's bed. Don't want them falling out and hurting themselves. Second, raise the bed up pretty much all the way if you're around six foot, uh, a little bit shorter if you're shorter, and then have the bed angled kind of about at 45 degree angle. I found that to work the best. Can experiment a little bit from there, see what works best for you guys. And then afterwards, remember to lower the bed so the patient isn't sitting up way high and that way they don't hurt themselves. So if you do all these steps, you won't be twisting and turning your back and hopefully you can prevent any adverse consequences of working as an EEG tech. 
Because I think if you use the proper technique, you're unlikely to have any back injuries. But there are some patients, let's say you're wrestling with a two-year-old and they're uncooperative. Yeah, your back's probably going to hurt a little bit after that one. But if we can make sure that on patients who are cooperative, that we use the correct technique on those, we can save our back, our back uh, muscles for the more difficult patients, whether it be a two-year-old fighting you or a dementia patient fighting you, someone with altered mental status. Those are the two main ones where there's really not much you can do about your back. You're going to be twisting and turning a little bit. But these patients need our help. Someone's got to hook them up to EEG. And that's us, guys. Thank you for watching. If you want to learn more about EEGs, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the like button. Appreciate it, guys. I'm still working on making my own EEG machine, Ion. Making good progress on that with my family. My brother and dad are programming it. It's going to be great, guys. We got a long way to go. This is just the beginning. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video.